Before you headed off to lunch, we had created this little empty shell of a program. And we said that this is the normal structure for an if statement. And the compiler knows how many lines to allocate to the if and how many to allocate to the else, because these curly brackets provide clear points of starting and stopping for each segment of code. What did we say happens if these curly brackets are not present? How does it know how many lines to allocate to the if and how many lines to allocate to the else? It only puts one line here for the if and one line here for the else. So then uh, there's a certain ambiguity that can sometimes crop up if we write the code like this. Let me show you. So look at this scenario where we have an if and we have an if and we have an else. And the question arises, does this else belong to this if or does it belong to this if? It's not so obvious, is it? OK, what if I was to change the indenting to be this way? No. The compiler doesn't care about the indenting. The indenting we only do for the reader. It belongs to the second one because it belongs to the closest if. Now, if I wanted it to belong to the other if, if I wanted this else to belong to this if, what could I do? What could I do to force it to belong to the other if? Yes, that's right, Miss. We could put the curly brackets back. So let me show you how we would do that. We could do it that way. Now it turns out that these are actually not even needed. The only one that's important would be these, because that would basically tell us that this if statement was inside this if, so that this else belongs to this if. So that's just the last topic on unit three that I had failed to cover.